Hey everyone, it's Steele. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I focus on photography. And as of recently, I said it wasn't gonna be a film photography channel, but that's what it's turned into. So today I wanted to go back in time and take a look at some of the first film photos I've ever taken. These aren't the very first rolls. I took my first rolls of film. I think I shot those late 2016. Wasn't able to find them on my hard drives, but I did find some photos from my trips I took in 2017 and 2018. And I'd love to take a look at them and kind of just compare where I started to where I am now. But before this video gets started, we are almost at 200 subscribers on this channel. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but I've noticed a lot more people are starting to watch over the past two or three months. So if you're not subscribed, please click subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. I enjoy making these videos and I wanna make them the best I can and have a little extra motivation to make them consistently. Now with all that out of the way, let's dive into this first roll of film that I found on a hard drive from June of 2017. So in the summer of 2017, my wife and I got married. We went to Vail, Colorado, and we had a small wedding up in the mountains. It was awesome. But while we were on this trip, we were there about a week in advance to do some hiking and exploring, and I brought a film camera along. As you're gonna see, these photos are not amazing. I misfocus a lot. I overexpose or underexpose. I don't remember what film stock I was using at the time, but it is not a great roll of film. That being said, there's this one shot of the mountains from the home we were staying in at sundown that has this light leak on the right side of the film. And I love this shot. I think the mountains look great. I think the colors turned out awesome. You've got the really green grass down in the valley contrasted with the really orange light on the rock and the very blue sky. I think that's just an interesting image color wise. At the end of the day, it's just a landscape photo, nothing crazy, but having the light leak in there and having those specific colors in there makes me really enjoy this photo. In this photo of my wife standing on this small trail, staring at this mountain of trees, I think this is a cool shot. At the end of the day, I don't think I nailed focus and it just feels overall really soft. I probably shot this photo at f2.8. This was really before I understood the importance of depth and that I actually like shooting images at a very deep aperture. So I typically now shoot anywhere between F16 and F22 for all my landscape shots, even if there's a subject in it, unless they're really close to the camera. But I wish I could go back in time and shoot this at like F16. I think that would have looked awesome, but you can see the sky's a little blown out and that's probably because the aperture was way too open. But I think out of the entire roll of film, my two favorite shots are from the day before the wedding where we went to the venue, we went to the site, we got married outside at the mountains in the background and it was raining. The rain had been going on and off and I walked outside, the sun was hitting the mountain, there was a hard shadow on the mountain and there was rain in the background. This image is awesome to me. My second favorite image might actually be more of my favorite than the past one is this one. Same day, same scene, just a different angle. You can see the water. We got married on this little island, surrounded by water, surrounded by mountains. Really cool place, but for not having a lot of knowledge of how to work a film camera, how to really nail down composition, this, this image does it for me. It's really, really cool. Going back in time, I would have shot this roll of film way different but sometimes you get lucky. And so that's why I think it's important that if you wanna get into shooting film, don't wait until you're just a pro at composition or feel like you're super confident with all these different elements. Sometimes you just gotta try stuff. At this point in time, I was a student in film school. I knew about composition, but I feel like shooting film is just a different beast. And so rather than letting that stop me, I just went out and shot and I've learned along the way. And I think that's so important Looking back at this role is seeing where I was, what I would change and what I do now. It's cool. I love going back and looking through this role and yeah, a lot of stuff's overexposed. I mean, this shot in the car with the mountain in the backdrop or I guess in the foreground is really, really cool. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't have taken this shot. But back in 2017, I was like, this is a dope image. And you can see my use of using like F2 to F3.5 for everything. Um, I got lucky with focus on this one because I just shot to infinity, but 
you know, you live and you learn. The next roll of film I shot was on my honeymoon in Cancun. Uh, I shot Portra 400. I remember this one specifically because my wife as a wedding gift got me Portra 400 rolls and a new film camera. So the previous roll of film you saw was shot using a Minolta X570. You've seen it on this channel a bunch. Uh, I got it just the year prior and that's what I used most of the time. For the rest of the photos you're gonna see from the year 2017, everything was shot using the Minolta Maxim 3000i. If you wanna learn more about both of those cameras, click the card in the top corner. I did a video comparing both of them and I've done in-depth videos on both of them so you can check them out. This roll from Cancun, nothing crazy, nothing special. I was definitely experimenting more with different compositions. Uh, again, light leaks, colors are okay. I got Porsche 400 because film photographers I was following were saying that's the gold standard. That's everything, that's the best roll. And I'm gonna be honest, I love other people's pictures from Porsche 400, but when I shot it, it just really didn't do it for me. Comparing it to the Kodak Ultramax that I used in my previous video, I personally, at this moment in time, would shoot Kodak Ultramax because it's cheaper, and I just love the gold tones a little more than the pastel tones that Portra 400 offers. So these photos from Cancun aren't really anything special. This is just one week after that last roll of film, and I'm still experimenting, trying a different film stock, but I do enjoy this photo from the beach cabana that's just kind of in the sand. I think that's a cool image, and I got focused really good on that, and it was good lighting, but other than that, the rest of the roll just is kind of moments captured, but nothing really artistic, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally okay. Shooting film doesn't have to be this overly artistic thing. You can shoot film just to capture moments, and I think that's just as cool. There's people I follow on Instagram that aren't photographers that shoot point and shoot film cameras and just post photo dumps of them on Instagram, and I think they look cooler than some of the artistic film photos that I've seen just because they feel raw, they feel real. And so film doesn't have to be this pretentious thing. It can be something you do and enjoy and have fun with between you and your friends. It's, it's, it's cool. Don't let film just be this snobby thing where you have to shoot a Mamiya 7.2 and shoot Portra 400, always at golden hour. Like, take shots because they make you happy. The rolls from Colorado and from Mexico are done. Now let's hop on over to Budapest, Hungary. Budapest, unbelievable place. I am so happy that I shot film there. The film photos didn't turn out the way I wanted them, but it's a cool memory to go back and look on. I shot everything using the Minolta Maxim 3000i. In hindsight, I would have used the X570 and I would have shot at F11, F16, F22, but maybe I'll take another trip to Budapest in the future and kind of give it a second go because Budapest is such a beautiful place and a couple of these images turned out awesome. But now having the knowledge and the experience I have with film, there's a lot I would do differently. That being said, I loved it here. I loved shooting these images and looking back on these images, I like looking at these more than looking at the digital images I took from that trip. It's cool to have images from so many different locations across the world, not just across the US, but across the world during this experimental phase where I was learning how to shoot film. At this point, I had probably only gotten like two or three rolls of film back before taking this trip. So this is still early on. I wasn't even testing the cameras. These trips were the tester for the camera. And it's cool. It's cool to just think back to the coffee shop I was sitting in, in the middle of Hungary, having no idea really where I was, but it brings me back to those moments and I really had a good time. It makes me wish I took a film camera to Madrid back in 2020, because that would have been such a cool city to just photograph. And I did photograph that city on digital. If you want to watch that video, you can click the card in the top corner. But it would have been just a little bit cooler if I used a film camera or if I had like a Fuji X100 series rather than just my iPhone. Again, those photos aren't anything super special, but they're, they're memorable. Same thing with the Smoky Mountains. Again, there's some cool photos you can see. I'm trying to get a little more creative with the composition and I was dealing with rain, but at the end of the day, I'm still learning. 
So now we jump over to Hawaii at the end of 2017. 2017 was a big year for travel for me and the role started out like this. I don't know what happened, but that's the first like seven shots on the roll. And now I'm just realizing that this roll of film was shot between New York City, Long Island, and Hawaii. Um, so let's just go through these photos. Yeah, I got some stereotypical New York City photos. This was actually the last time I was in New York City. I would love to go back and shoot more film. As you can see with every roll of film, I'm getting a little bit more creative. I'm trying different things, seeing what works, what doesn't. Ultimately, that's helped me get to the place I'm at now. And the trial period isn't always just gonna be like one or two rolls of film. It might take many, many months of shooting in many different locations before you start to figure out what you like to shoot, how you like to shoot. And for me, it took all of 2017 and 2018. So what are my final thoughts? I think at the end of the day, if you wanna grow as a photographer, whether it's professional or just as a hobbyist like myself, you just need to go out and make images happen. If you wanna get better at shooting film, you have to shoot film. You can watch a lot of information, you can study it, but until you're actually doing it, you're not really gonna grow at the craft. And I think my images are a great example of that. 2017, 2018, there were a couple really good photos in there that I still love to this day, but the majority of the images were not amazing. Whereas my most recent roll of film from Salt Lake City, Utah, there were a lot of images on that roll that I think were hits. And that just comes with the years of practice, the years I've put into taking photos and making images and exploring and trying different compositions and different lighting, different settings and different rolls of film. It just takes time. So give yourself time to practice this, to grow in this, to do things not so great so that you can do things great in the future. So thank you so much for watching. If you're new, be sure to hit subscribe. We're almost to 200 subscribers. Like this video if you liked it. I know I said I'm not gonna be a film photography channel, I'm gonna do digital stuff, but my next video is me reviewing a roll of film I just shot in Montana last week. So I will see you guys in the next film photography video. Until next time.